meeples, how the devil are we? Oh, we're great, thanks for asking. Well, I am. Brian's still sulking after getting his proverbial bottom handed to him last night in Mosaic. It was both our first go, so you can't blame it on that. It was close, though. Maybe next time. I don't know why they call it Mosaic. Was it one of the tech cards? I don't know. Anyway, if you do, listeners, send the answers in on a postcard to... Hang on. I don't actually know where we are. I know we're in the shed, but where is the shed? Yes, it's in Jason's back garden, but where's Jason's back garden? I know it's behind his house, so I give up. Anyway, answers on a postcard to... The meeple minded new shed, Jason's back garden, behind his house, on a road, somewhere in the UK. Never know, it might get to us. Right, what were we doing? Ah yes, our jobs. News. Button. Hit it. We've only mentioned the game the last two weeks, and here it is on the news again. Lo and behold, I get an email here in the shed from the peeps over at Restoration Games with some very interesting news, but it was lacking in detail. Well, any detail whatsoever, really. We are in fact talking about Unmatched, the highly asymmetrical miniature fighting game for two to four players. Brief summary, if you've not played Unmatched, each hero from various sets is represented by a unique deck designed to invoke their style and legend. Take Alice in Wonderland versus Sherlock Holmes and Watson versus Jurassic Park's T-Rex versus Deadpool. Tactical movement and no luck combat resolution create a unique play experience that rewards expertise. But just when you've mastered one set, new heroes arrive to provide all new matchups. Well, over the weekend, Restoration Games released a couple different teaser trailers for an upcoming crowdfunding project. The first video we see an old-timey radio sat on a table. Think 80s B-movie-esque. The broadcaster describes a terrible creature looming over the city and describes feeling an impending doom. It fades to black with a view of a new Unmatched Adventures logo and a March 23rd launch date. The second trailer follows the same theme of a differently designed radio, as the broadcaster throws some light as to some of the creatures in town. He sees a giant ant, a frog-like man leaping across buildings, puddles of acid and webbing everywhere, all while booming footsteps approach before a giant spider leg drops down behind the window, followed by the logo and again the launch date. And the latest, releasing just in time for me to get it into the news, continues the theme, with the broadcaster slightly more upbeat as he sees two scientists, a famed hero from the Far East and a seven foot tall woman. All, as he mentions, have thrown their past rivalries aside for the greater good. What was different as it faded to black was a different logo. The familiar unmatched logo was there, but surrounding it was text saying that all unmatched sets are compatible with unmatched adventures. One glean from an image of the box, be it final design or not, and from an image Jason passed over, looks to be a white version of the black unmatched box with the new Unmatched Adventures logo. Entitled Unmatched Adventures, Tales to Amaze, and some text saying a whole new way to play the hit miniature game, cooperative, solo, or competitive. So you can head on over to the Restoration Games social media accounts and click through the links to be notified of the launch on the 23rd of March. Although more than likely, we'll remind you once it launches and we have a little bit more information. Who doesn't love dogs? Okay, some of you. Well, Birdwood Games released their game Dog Park last year through crowdfunding, and together with a few expansions along the way, bringing in more European and famous four-legged friends. The game itself is a midway competitive set collector with some degree of point-to-point -point movement. Well, they need walking, don't they? Well, as exciting as a dog can get when you say walkies, the next expansion has just been announced. The expansion, known as New Tricks, introduces yet even more dogs to walk, including multi-breeds. 
more places to wander off to and explore, and a trainer has been hired to improve your doggies by teaching them new tricks. You are still trying to become the most accomplished walker by earning the most reputation, but now you have more layers of strategy to explore and use to your advantage. The expansion also lets you add a fifth player, which can be played with or without the new tricks expansion, increasing the tightness of the action selection in the park. Early views of the new tricks expansion say there is more to love coming along. There are new abilities and the very intriguing super locations that will change up the gameplay. Dog Park New Tricks is set to hit Kickstarter this summer. We don't usually mention that game on here, and when we say that game, we mean that game that is bloody everywhere. Reskinned, rethemed, electric versions, card versions, travel versions. But be it different versions, it is in essence the same bloody thing. It's Mon, Mon, oh, Mon, no, no, I can't say it. I think I was a bit sick in my mouth then. Fill in, Brian, I need a drink. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. You know what I mean. On February 20th, the US TV station and non-profit corporation, PBS, aired a documentary about the long-lived game titled Ruthless, That Game's Secret History. The film features author Mary Pillen, author of the Monopolist's obsession, Fury and the Scandal, behind the apparently the world's most favourite board game. Favourite board game? Brian? <coughs> what rank is it on BGG? <coughs> 24,030. Well, that na knackers that theory then, doesn't it? <coughs> well, I see your point, but BGG is all that matters to proper gamers, doesn't it? <coughs> oh, I digress. The film also includes archived footage of Ralph Anspach, designer of the anti-version of that game, and Lizzie Maggie, designer of the Landlord's game, which was a much better name for the game that was transformed into that game. If you've been gaming for some time, then this history might not be a secret to you, but this video nicely details Maggie's original inspiration based on the economic principles of Henry George who argued that land should be owned by all in society. Those wanting to watch the film may not be able to outside of the US, although I'm sure it'll appear on the YouTubes at some point. Receiving rave reviews from attendees at Origins Game Fair and UK Games Expo last year, ahead of its release, and making it into both ours and Jason's collection, was Acropolis, designed by Jules Massauds and published by Gigamic. Acropolis sees you becoming architects in ancient Greece, building houses, temples, market gardens and barracks to improve your city and triumph over your competitors. The open drafting and tile placing game sees you aiming to raise your prestige as you build and make full potential of your city's districts. Last week saw France's Game of the Year award being announced, also known in the industry as the Asdor, which saw Acropolis take the high honours and beating out nominees District Noir from Spiral Editions, a two-player bluffing and set collection game, and That's Not a Hat by publisher Ravensburg, a party bluffing memory game. Other awards dished out were to Matthias Wiggs' Ark Nova, which beat out the game based on the life of Scottish-American industrialist and philanthropist Andrew Carnegie, entitled Carnegie, and sci-fi worker placement game Federation for the award for Best Expert Game. The Advanced Award went to the deck-building take on Capture the Flag Challengers from Johannes Krenner and Markus Swalitschek with Spencer Stark's text message RPG Alice is Missing and the code-cracking deduction game Turing Machine just missing out. Finally, the award for Best Children's Game went to the point-and-click investigation game with cards, Flashback Zombie Kids from Baptiste Derez and Marc-Antoine Doyon, who won out over Wizard and Witch Racing Game, The Magic Mountain, and Loot Balancing Dexterity Game, Stomp the Plank. Congratulations from all us here at The Meeple Minded to all the winners and indeed the nominees. A fair few games we haven't got to the table yet, so ones to add to the list. Hands up, who likes trains? Well, I know you do, who else? Yep, yeah, I think Jason will like this one too. Neen Valley Railway, in partnership with a magazine at Tabletop Gaming, is set to host an evening of board games on one of their heritage steam trains. 
So gamers and train enthusiasts are invited to come along for a two hour trip on the rails, departing from Wandsford Station at 6.45pm on Saturday 20th of May this year. Christopher John Eggett, the outgoing editor of Tabletop Gaming Magazine, says there's a great history of board games about trains, and what better way to enjoy that than on a historical train. For gamers, it's a chance to play classics like Ticket to Ride on a train. Possibly the greatest ambiance for a game about classic rail travel, and for those looking for a family event that mixes their hobbies with a novel evening out, well, then it's got wide appeal. Tickets for the trip are selling fast, and there's a number of seat options available. These range from private compartments, that can seat six for £199, to pre-booking tables of four, £99, saving on individual tickets, right down to individual tickets of £35 for adults or £14.50 for children, for those who want to ride the train and maybe make some new friends along the way. For those who would like to buy a copy of Ticket Ride for the event, there's an option to pre-order and receive the game on the day of event. While the evening is pitched as a play ticket to ride on a train event, ticket holders are invited to bring any game they wish. That can reasonably fit on the table, so no Twilight Imperium 4th Edition or Mosaic Deluxe Edition sneaking on. In the same vein, guests are welcome to bring their own food and drink to the event. Claire Ingram, publisher of Tabletop Gaming Magazine, mentions, with board games like Ticket to Ride rising in popularity with families everywhere and the inherent romance of steam trains, this event crosses the generational divide, and this is one of the reasons we've left the food and drinks option open. Every group, whether that's a family going for an evening out or just a few friends getting together for an amusing setting to play games, can make it their own. This week sees the release of Catan Console Edition, giving fans of the hugely popular board game a means to play with friends online, or to gather them round the couch and in front of a board that truly comes to life. The official console version, available for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S consoles, has been in development courtesy of Dovetail Games, with help from their friends over at Nomad Games. In addition to the two multiplayer game modes, players can take to trading and building with dynamic AI in single player mode, using different tactics and strategies to face characters based on the wider Catan lore. For those that enjoy Catan with friends and family, the ability to play console edition around the couch still enables those all too familiar discussions on tactics, who wants to trade some sheep, Resource cards remain secret, however, with the inclusion of a card companion on smartphone that doesn't require an app to be installed. Online play gives those too far apart to play together in the living room to still enjoy Catan with friends or strangers, and with cross-play as an included feature, it doesn't matter whether players are on Xbox or indeed PlayStation. There's a host of challenges to compete in-game where no two boards are the same and players can customise their experience with dice skins and hex frames, showcasing their skills to other players. For those that follow the Catan World Championship, they can also play on five game boards featured in last year's World, European and American competitions by purchasing the Deluxe Edition of the game. Prices for the Catan Console Edition Deluxe are £19.99, $24.99 and €24.99. Euros. Catan Console Edition is $16.99 on Xbox, $15.99 on PlayStation, $19.99, €19.99. There have been a few editions of Cartagena over the years, and as we've mentioned on previous news stories, what better way to reintroduce a game to a new audience than by throwing cute animals at it. Well, anthropomorphic animal pirates in place of the previous historical styles. It's been done with Libertalia, Winds of the Gale Crest by Stonewire Games, alongside My Little Side, Pie in the Sky. Well, following what must be a profitable trend, Cartagena Escape Diaries, by designer Leo Colavini and published by Pretzel Games, is an upcoming board game that takes the original 2000 release and revamps it for the modern era, taking the original pirate jailbreak board game and adding entirely new artwork by Chris Williams and additional game 
gameplay modes inspired by the 1672 real life jailbreak in which a gang of pirates broke out of the prison fortress of Cartagena. Escape Diaries sees two to five players attempting to find their way through a series of underground passages in the hopes of reaching the island poor and escaping. During the game, each player will be responsible for a group of six pirates, whom they must guide through the deep passages using various actions found on the cards they draw. Another change featured in the new version of Cartagena is the addition of several new gameplay modes. First Escape is the gameplay mode which most resembles the original version of the board game, with players moving pirates through passages by leapfrogging them over each other using their cards. In Second Escape, Players will be able to alter the gameplay by placing a captain hat onto one of their pirates and using their respective powers. Whilst Third Escape enables players to attempt a faster, yet more dangerous escape aboard a leaky raft. The final available gameplay mode, Fourth Escape, combines both the elements from Follow the Captain and Risky Rafts into a single mode. Cartagena Escape Diaries is set to be released in autumn this year, with a retail price yet to be confirmed. And just sneaking into the news before I hit record is news from Awakened Realms on another of its projects heading for crowdfunding later this year. We know Awakened Realms for bringing us rather epic creations with usually high price tags to go with them. Think Lords of Hellas, Lords of Ragnarok, Aetherfields, ISS Vanguard and one of James's go-to games, the one and only Aliens-esque Nemesis. The third game in line of the Nemesis franchise has just been announced to follow Nemesis itself and indeed Nemesis Lockdown. Nemesis Retaliation, as its title goes, looks set to launch late this year, giving people plenty of time to save up. The campaign text reads, Nemesis Retaliation, the highly anticipated third instalment of the critically acclaimed sci-fi horror board game series designed by Adam Kowapinski and published by Awakened Realms. Nemesis Retaliation promises to bring something very different into the tested Nemesis engine. This time, players will take on the roles of highly trained marines, entering the alien nest with strict orders and the most advanced tools available. Hang on, that sounds familiar? Yeah, me too. But will they be well prepared enough to face the unrelenting horde that awaits them? In Nemesis Retaliation, the tension is higher than ever as players must survive against overwhelming odds and the possibility of betrayal at every step, especially if you're playing with Jason. As the third instalment of the series, Nemesis Retaliation builds upon the already successful Nemesis DNA and brings even more thrilling gameplay, with more aliens to fight and new tools to help you deal with them. This game promises to be a fresh experience for both fans of the series and new players alike. And we're heading on over to bring you the BGG Top 5 Hotness list as of recording. In 5. Maintaining its frozen grip on the top 5 is Salafair's Games Frosthaven. In 4. Reiner Knizia's latest re-implementation of the classic Yellow and Yangtze breaks cover in Huang to be published by Flanks. In 3. Brass Birmingham by Roxley shows how much fun transporting goods around the Midlands can be as it maintains a top 5 spot. In 2. New to the top 5 hotness is a new game, Arceus Society, seeing you sending out explorers on expeditions. Designed by Paolo Mori of Libertalia fame and in some respects a re-implementation of another of his games, Ethnos, and being published by Space Cowboys. In one. And Inside Up Games title Earth makes the step up to take top spot this week as the open world engine builder finishes its Kickstarter campaign. Although late pledges are available if you wanted to jump on board. And talking of crowdfunding... We're taking an unlikely step over to another crowdfunding source this week as we head on over to Backerkit, as they've just launched their own crowdfunding platform. Publisher Thunderglyph Games has a history of organising and promoting its titles in game lines, such as the Matchbox collection of tiny games released in 2020, the Made in Wonderland line that uses an Alice in Wonderland setting, 
and art by Paolo Voto, and a 30 Journeys line for games that provide long, immersive adventures. Well, its newest line is dubbed Soda Pop, because the games come packaged in containers that resemble soda cans. Yep, you heard me right, soda cans, or... Fizzy drinks cans if you're this side of the Atlantic. Some gamers may hate the gimmicky packaging, but from the looks of it, on the campaign page, together with the casual and playful vibe that we think Thunder Griff Games is trying to convey through said packaging, it certainly has grabbed my attention. And despite the packaging, there are in fact games. A collection of four games to be precise, and they are two-player abstract strategy games with short playing times and going by the collective title The Soda Pop Collection, and each game plays in around 15 minutes. The first game is called Cat A Comb, designed by Pier Paolo Paolettis. A group of mischievous cats is trying to play tricks on each other. These sneaky cats will either group together into troublesome crews or assert ownership over every surface of the place. Your goal is to add and move stacks of cats in this game of a Mancala madness in order to get your own cats all stacked up in the right places. Game 2 comes from designer Enrico Gandolfo and leans heavily into the whole soda theme by using bottle caps as its game pieces in Top Cap. As freezing winter winds blow outside, you relax in a cosy chair at your favourite local pub, along with your friends. A game idea has come to you where the goal is simple. The player who moves their cap onto their opponent's bottle will win. However, getting there can be tricky because each cap affects how the other caps move. The path to victory is an elusive puzzle, and can you outwit your opponent and become the top cap. In For Genis by Ignacio Fernandez, you want to land on the opponent's base or make them unable to play. After the rigorous and sweltering work of hammering and polishing is completed, you breathe life into the figurines and use them in a game of wit to determine who is the most capable forger of all. Summon, move and use the unique abilities of your creatures as you attempt to reach your opponent's corner. Finally, Lightseeker from Daniel and Julian Danza uses a familiar element from another abstract strategy games, a blocker that keeps the opponent from doing exactly what they want to do while protecting a future action you might want to take. So you must slide or tilt cubes to increase the light in the valley as you try to accumulate seven or more connected points of light in order to win the game. The games themselves in question are €15 Euros each, which is around £13.50 or $16 at the moment, with any freebies or stretch goals that may occur for your selected game from the crowdfunding project included in that. Alternatively, grab all four games in a very nice box resembling a big American fridge, together with all unlocked freebies, stretch goals included in the fridge bundle backer and that's going to set you back 45 euros or in pounds that will be about 40 pounds and in dollars is about 48 and the page over on backer kit has all the info on shipping costs based on your postal zones which i'll let you discover on your own Well, I think we've taken up enough of people's time today, so it only goes for me to say your turn to say goodbye, Brian. <laughs> Christ, that was a long one. Anyway, and it's a goodbye from me. Keep safe, meeples. Keep those dice rolling, the cards shuffling, and we'll be right here for you next week.